I'm Jennifer Marie Keller. Welcome to my Diary of a Painter. I'm working on my still life that the working title for it is from the Fountain of Youth. I kind of had the setup pretty much figured out yesterday and so today I wanted to get my easel set up because I really needed to figure out how to get a light attached so I could have my panel which is right here that I'm working on so I'll show you that. Okay, here is the setup. Got my martini glass with a little bit of water in it. I might fill it up a little bit more. Glasses, napkin, all on a table. And so right here, I switched out my easel so I'm using a more upright easel. Before I was using my plain air easel, but this easel for my plain air is good for plain air but it's inexpensive and just um, pretty shaky. And I worked so long trying to get my panel on there with the light clipped up here, but it just wasn't working. And it wasn't, it, it was hard to get it to be level as well. So I switched it out with, this is more of a traditional studio easel, which is working a whole lot better. So to get the panel at the proper height, my ceiling slopes down uh, as it gets to this wall. So I have the easel up as high as it goes with the ceiling and I couldn't get the this shelf to be as high as I wanted. So I have a stretcher bar for a canvas right here and then another one on that. And so I have the top stretcher bar clamped to the easel. And this easel also, I have lost the tarp, top part that goes down the main mask that will then keep the panel or canvas secure to the easel. And even if I did have it, since my light is right there, that would have, if there was something sticking out, it would have created a shadow down it. So at the bottom, I have two clamps then right along the edges, securing the panel to my easel. And then this clamp light I got from Amazon and I'll put a link down below if you are interested in getting it. This was I believe um, about $10. And so I have it clamped up to the easel. It's really nice because it's got a ball joint right here. You, you can really turn that any direction that you want and then freeze it there. So I've got a nice light now on my panel, but I also didn't want that light touching anything for my setup. This is not the right time of day. The, the sun is going down for when I'm gonna be painting this, but there's more light usually coming um, backlit. So I didn't want any competing light from that light hitting this. So I have this piece of foam core that I have just taped up to my easel like that, which blocks the light perfectly. So now I have pretty much everything set up with how I want it with the actual setup and then the setup of my easel with a nice light source on it. I'm really ready to start painting it, but the sun's going down, so I'm gonna wait till tomorrow and then I will start the block-in process, which is one of my favorite things to do is to start a painting with that blocking process is really fun. Oh yeah, one other thing that I did was I want to be really specific with how the placement of the setup is on my panel. And so I, this is the frame that I have for it, this pretty silver, slightly silver gold frame. So since when you put a panel or a canvas in the frame, some, a little bit of the edge is gonna get cut off. And since I have this little piece of the napkin that goes down just a little bit off the edge, I wanted to make sure that that wasn't touching, gonna to be touching the bottom of the, the frame and it wasn't gonna cut off any, but it would be a nice distance from the bottom. So what I ended up doing was I put the panel in the frame and then I took a piece of sharp, soft charcoal and traced along the border of the frame so I knew exactly where the edges of the panel that's actually going to be in view and not hid behind 
the, the frame where that's going to be. And so you can see that border along here, along the edges. And one last thing as far as the composition goes, I like to have a little bit of wrinkles along this edge just so it's not like a perfect crisp edge. I like things to be a bit more soft. So I notice on this side, especially the sheet hangs down the bar and the weight of the sheet is like the next day, um, this will be smoothed out. So those little bumps there, which you can probably hardly even see in the video, will go away. So on this side, I tucked the sheet up so that there's no then weight where it's gonna be pulling these wrinkles back. And also, I, I'm gonna wait until later on in the painting when I have the composition on the painting and it's um, the painting's moving along quite a bit, but I think I might add some really subtle, subtle wrinkles in the fabric moving across the table. Um, I don't like in still life where there's really obvious wrinkles in tablecloth because I, that just like, I guess like my, it just bugs me, I guess, having the like huge wrinkles on a tablecloth because it seems unnatural, like who would do that? They would smooth it out a bit. Uh, so if I do have wrinkles compositionally to like make movement across the tabletop, which probably, if I do something, it's probably gonna circle around the glass and the glasses, I'm gonna make it subtle. But I don't know exactly what I want and if I wanna do that. So I'll just make that decision later on down the road if I feel like I need more movement in the painting in that area. Tuesday, I start the painting process. I mix up a shadow color of yellow ochre, sennelier red, and ivory black. This gives me a brown shadow color that I'm going to use for the, this whole painting session today. I take a lot of time getting the placement of everything on the panel because I want to make sure that the composition looks great with relation of all the objects and also all the objects in relation to the edges of the painting as well. I use a mirror, a plain mirror, to keep checking that my drawing is correct, like the martini glass is the right size and the eyeglasses and all the other elements of this painting. I thought that I would be using the draw scope for this part, but I'm finding that the draw scope shrinks the image down a bit, just a little bit, when I look through the draw scope. And I want this painting to be strictly sight size for the time being. So instead of using the draw scope, I'm just checking my measurements and placement of everything with just a plain old normal mirror. So first I'm getting the drawing aspect of the painting in using the shadow mixtures. So I have an outline roughly of the table, glass, eyeglasses, and napkin. Then I start working with the shadow shape and light shape. I want to keep things really simple, as simple as possible at this early stage. And so I divide the whole painting into a shadow shape and a light shape. And while doing this without having half tones or anything else really helps me to get the drawing of the picture in. I'm also not using any medium but everything rather is just being dry brushed. And I really like the beginning dry, bu dry brush stage because it feels almost like drawing with charcoal rather than painting. And I can get things to be really atmospheric and soft as I'm still figuring out the gestures and proportions of this still life. Um, I also feel the background of this still life in as a really simple shadow shape. The background is a rose bush up against a fence, and it's actually not all shadow, but the bits of light shape that are back there are really dim, and so for this stage of the painting, I'm just gonna keep it simplified it into a shadow shape, and I might keep it like this. I guess I'll see how the painting develops if I wanna bring light shapes in back there. Now, at the top of the painting, you can see that there's a couple inches that are left as a light shape. This is the top part of the fence, and the fence changes from being solid to lattice, so crisscrossing bars. I don't know exactly how I want to solve this lattice yet, since 
it is at the top of the painting, which is periphery and so far away from the martini glass, which is the subject. I don't want there to be a lot of attention drawn to it. And if I draw the lattice in, as I really do see it in life, um, it would have a lot of contrast and so the eye would be drawn there. But I don't want the eye to be drawn there because I want it to be drawn to the martini glass. So at the moment, I'm leaving it just as a light shape and I'll figure out a more beautiful, subtle way to treat that area farther along in the painting process. Wednesday, I take the darks darker, so I'm mostly working in the shadow shapes of the painting again. Not only do I make them darker, but I'm also working on their temperature as well. So the shadow of the tablecloth is pretty cold, and the shadow in the napkin are more warm, and the shadow that's out the window is mostly cold, but there's some warmth in there as well. I'm trying to keep the the differences of the temperatures pretty subtle though, so the shadow shape overall looks pretty unified across the whole image. Working with the shadow shape, I'm also correcting the drawing of the painting. For example, I fix the eyeglasses and make the martini glass more symmetrical. And I also wanna make sure that the napkin, the stand of the glass and the eyeglasses look like they are sitting with their proper weight onto the table. I think this is really important because I think it can be distracting to have objects look like they are floating on a table. This, and it's a challenging thing to do to get the objects to look like they are all sitting on the table with their proper weight. And I, I find that it's always kind of changes a bit throughout the painting as the painting develops, as you get the values and temperatures of everything to where they need to be. So I am focusing on getting everything to sit properly on the table, but I'm also not letting myself get obsessed with it because I know I can make it look better and better each day I work on the painting as it develops. Saturday. I want to start keying the image. So by keying the image, that means that I have my darkest dark and my lightest light on the painting so I can see the range that I'm working on with the, the specific image that I'm working on. So the lightest light is on the stem of the martini glass where there is a reflection going down it. And I put pure white where that highlight is because I want to see the range that I have, like how realistically bright things will look on my painting. Because when I look at the setup, I know that it's impossible for paint to go as dark as I see in the setup. And also the same for the lights where I know that I cannot get paint to look as bright as the, as the highlights actually do look in this setup. I focus on the glass today because with the reflections on it, this is the, it just has the brightest parts of the painting, but also because I want to correct that martini glass and to get things looking more symmetrical with it, which glasses are always tricky for that reason. At least I find them so. I try and work simply where I'm not mixing up all the colors that I see, but trying to break up that martini glass into really simple and few mixtures as I can. I do end up getting frustrated <laughs> this day where things are looking a bit too mushy and soft. And there are two reasons I think for this. One being is my mixtures. I find it really hard to get the perfect mixtures right off the bat in the first stages of the painting. It always takes me a few days to get the layers built up and to find just the right values and temperatures that I want to be using. And this has always kind of been my thing. <laughs> but I know that the more that I work on something, I can always I can always figure it out just if I have time to do so. So I'm working on getting faster <laughs> at this and then maybe one day I won't have this awkward thing happen in the painting process in the future. The other reason then why things are looking mushy and too soft is I believe because of the brushes that I was using. So I'm using stiff bristle brushes, which is always what I use to start a painting. Though, since I'm not using any dryers in my mediums right now, well, I'm, not, I'm actually not using any mediums yet in this stage 
of the painting. So the paint on the canvas underneath is still wet and moves around a fair amount. So I think it would be better if I switched to a slightly softer bristle brush, something that can still really push paint around, but is also soft enough, enough that the bristles can lay the paint on the painting without affecting the layer underneath. This day was a bit frustrating, but I let myself sit and look at the painting and think about what I can do next time to make this painting better. Whenever I do get frustrated and I feel like I didn't move the painting as far along as I wanted to that day, or like I just spun my wheels in the whole day for the whole day and like made no real progress, or or even worse, made the painting worse. So whenever I have days like this, I always take a little break. And usually the length of that break is usually measured by how frustrated I feel then. And then I come back, look at the painting, and see if I can make a game plan for tomorrow to make the painting better. I feel like the day never feels like a total waste if I leave with a clear idea on what I'm going to be doing on the painting tomorrow. So stay tuned for next week's video on this painting because I plan to have this painting looking pretty solid by then. So I'm definitely excited to get to work on this painting <laughs> this week. I'm Jennifer Marie Keller. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel, comment and like this video because it really helps me out.